the official citation is for the determination of the three-dimensional structure of a photosynthetic reaction center. And uh, of course, I don't think you understood what I said. But uh, photosynthetic reaction center is the core, the heart of the photosynthetic machinery. Photosynthetic machinery is, for instance, that in the plant, which uh, uses the energy of the absorbed sunlight, focuses the energy in the photosynthetic reaction center, and in the photosynthetic reaction center, we get a charge separation, and we transfer the electron, which is released upon the charge separation across the membrane. And this then reduces an acceptor and leads to the generation of a voltage. And this is the primary basic process of photosynthesis, and uh, it could be understood on the basis of our structure determination. The second point was that it was the first structure determination of any membrane-bound protein. And uh, this was considered to be impossible. When I was a student, the most used textbook in biochemistry said it is uh, impossible to crystallize membrane proteins, therefore we do not know much about the structure of membrane proteins. Of course, one has to be primed, to get primed to start such kind of research, which is considered to be impossible. And uh, I had an observation in the, the lab where I stored bacterial rhodopsin in the freezer and I got something like glass-like bodies, solid bodies. So I thought when you can make one kind of solid body, namely glass-like bodies, you might be able also to make a crystal. And uh, so I thought about how to make it, made, made experiments, synthesized detergents, things like this, and uh, after maybe three years I was successful with bacterial rhodopsin. Unfortunately, these crystals were not good enough. Then I switched to more suited, more appropriate uh, uh, proteins, and this was the photosynthetic reaction center. Uh, the advantage was the protein is colored, it's nice to work with it. You see uh, the color and uh, even color changes tell you that the protein might no longer be happy. So a very important point and there is enough around uh, of this protein so you don't have really material problems. Uh, we have general, we have the problem that biological materials are not stable compared to uh, materials of the inorganic chemists. So when we consider fossil system 2, the reaction center there, it produces oxygen. And oxygen in combination of light is very often very toxic. And what happens there is you get an oxidative degradation of one protein subunit. And nature has developed a way to exchange this damaged protein every 20 minutes. So every 20 minutes a repair has to be made. And I do not think that we can mimic this process in a technical manner. So if we would take out the photosynthetic system, put it into an artificial uh, membrane for energy, for, for energy conversion, for energy uh, transduction, it will not work long term. Also, the efficiency at the end is not so high. And uh, when you talk about photosynthetic efficiency, you talk about quantum efficiency. Quantum efficiency is about 100%. This means that for each a uh, light quantum, light uh, particle absorbed, you get one electron transported. But the energy which is stored at the end in the reduced compound, at the end in the plant, it's a compound called NAD, NADPH. Yeah? There, there's already 90% of the energy is lost already. And uh, the theoretical limit, upper limit for the efficiency of photosynthesis with respect to biomass is about 4%. What are the energy sources? Of course, we, have ener we, we don't have many energy sources. On Earth, we have three energy sources, and, uh, uh, and uh, three uh, natural energy sources. One is the sunlight, the most predominant one. Uh, the other one is the geothermal energy, but this comes from the decay of radioactive isotopes, which are in the core of the Earth. Yeah? So it's already radioactivity which, where we have, uh, which contributes to, to our climate on, 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 on the planet. And uh, the third energy is that of, uh, of uh, the tides. It's the effect of the moon, on the, on, of the gravity of the moon on, on, on the oceans, which also could be used as, as an energy source, but of, it's very minor important. So we, I, I do not think that we have another choice than, than solar energy. And uh, with respect to the available uh, area, there's enough area available in the deserts of the, uh, to supply all our energy demands worldwide. We have to invest. 
I clearly think that uh, we have to use at the long term the, the, the energy of the sunlight. Uh, wind energy will be a very valuable uh, addition, but I don't think that we can generate all our electric energy and uh, energy for heating from, uh, uh, from windmills. So we have to use uh, the uh, solar energy. There is either photovoltaic energy or there is also so-called solar thermic energy stuff where you simply buy mirrors, focused mirrors, you heat an oil. And oil, this oil uh, can be heated up to 400 degrees and that you use then to, 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 uh, to boil water and to, uh, and to have steam engines to generate electricity. And uh, both processes are in the, in the order efficiency of about 15% already now. And this is uh, by a factor of 100 more efficient than we, than we would go via biomass. And so this is really a, a very clear advantage for, uh, for this kind of thing. And uh, so it may be take some time until we produce enough uh, the, the, of these solar thermic plants or, or these photovoltaic cells. So in between probably we have still have to rely on uh, nuclear energy. The major reason is that uh, the efficiency is so low. Uh, you have to consider, uh, let me say, start off with biogas. Biogas has an, has an efficiency of 0.3% considering the energy in the biogas, in the methane there, it's methane. And when you convert then this energy into electric en energy, you will use again uh, two thirds of it. So you have, a, have an uh, energy conversion, you, you have an efficiency of 0.1% if you produce electricity via biogas, compared to the 15%, 150% fold more about directly using uh, the photovoltaic cell. The other point is that uh, the energy in biomass doesn't come for free. You have to, uh, you have to use fertilizer, you have to plow the field, and even plowing the field you need, what I read is that you, for one hectare you need 100 liter of diesel. And the yield in, for instance, in biodiesel is, is 1200 hectares, so already close to one tenth is lost for blowing of the field which you use for growing uh, the rape in this in, the, in this case so uh, you have uh, you need you need as I said fertilizer and, and it's amazing for fertilizer you use ammonia, ammonium and the ammonium is made by the harbor bosch verfahren there you use you, in, you have to use hydrogen and the hydrogen is made out of biogas from methane so it's a circle but uh, so it's it's very it's, it's very curious uh, to see that um, of course it's uh, and at the end it, it doesn't pay off. And if you use really biomass, and I'm a clearly favorite in that case, you should burn biomass, biomass and replace uh, heating oil. So you have the heating oil left, uh, uh, you can use this saved heating oil for driving your cars. And use all the wood which you can, not for converting it to diesel, but you, uh, but you have to, uh, you, you have, you, you use it for the heating purposes of, of for making electric energy, energy by adding it to in, into uh, by burning it into electricity st uh, stations. Yeah? You see already the public opinion is is, is shifting and uh, there are plans for getting new nuclear power stations not far from here in Switzerland and uh, there will be new power new nuclear power stations in Finland. And the, and, the, and the Finnish people are normally very much concerned about environment. There are uh, plans to construct a new numbers in uh, a new number, uh, a few new power stations in Great Britain, in the UK, and uh, certainly there's also a change in the in the in the United States of America. Uh, and uh, so nuclear uh, nuclear energy comes back. Uh, and for the moment I would think we need it because when you go for photovoltaic energy we have the problem that the energy is not all is not, is not available especially we have the energy problem in the winter times yeah? and uh, in summer times probably we could uh, come up could buy photovoltaic cells or by solar thermal so, solar thermal machines we could generate probably enough but the storage must the storage problem must be solved we must invest into more powerful batteries in the energy density of, uh, of all these storage materials, batteries, is lower than that, for instance, of, of, uh, of the fuel. Of, so, so this is clearly still an advantage of the fuel, but we must invest energy into, uh, we must invest money into uh, getting better energy storage systems.